The anthropocentric definition of wealth and progress, has led to a greatly dysbiotic urban environment. As a result, cities are among the biomes with the lowest biodiversity. Humanity's modern relationship with nature, is restricted to the capitalization and exploitation of natural assets, disrupting natural habitats, architecture, so far, has applied nature as an afterthought with unsuccessful and superficial efforts, towards the integration of lost biodiversity. Thus, it is vital to shift nature's position in the city equally suitable and safe for the coexistence of human and non-human agents. According to the UN Environment Programme, a country's inclusive wealth is the social value of all its capital assets, including natural, human and produced capital. Under this model, the new role of the architect is to curate environmental data towards the creation of space and apply a monitored rewilding to achieve an ecocentric urbanism. The complexity of the data renders traditional design method insufficient. We thus question, how we can leverage machine learning to process environmental big data and generate space with embedded ecological intelligence. We conduct our research under the following methodology. First, we study the non-human spatial conditions and parameters for their growth. Second, we insert these data to two-dimensional spatial layouts and train GONs to create ecologically intelligent iterations to be used in the design. Third, we analyze three different site conditions, in an urban scale to extract various ecological information. Last, we implement the appropriate data onto the GON-generated layouts embedded with non-linear ecological complexities. We then curate them to generate the architecture. One of the challenges of GONs is that, they fundamentally work on 2D information. So in generating these systems, we started to work with embedding three-dimensional information through Z-depth rendering. Our design system is interested in developing spatial conditions, that are optimized for the growth of non-human agents. For both urban flora and fauna, we gather the essential parameters for their habitation, such as slopes and different orientations for different growth as well as, seclusion, circulation, and nesting areas. We initiate the process by translating the above non-human niches into ecological big data through machine learning. Cryptogams grow better on damp inclined surfaces ideally oriented towards the northeast. Nectar-rich flowering plants could possibly grow on the south-facing slopes, attracting pollinators and provide shelters for avifauna on the higher ridges of the slopes, this information is incorporated into the Z-depth plans. The growth-optimized geometries, are translated into datasets which we then use to create a generative GAN. Different parts of the habitat accommodate different species and functions. Slopes facing northeast have maximum amount of moss growth. Slopes facing south have nectar-rich flowering plants as they need maximum amount of sun exposure. In the high ridges of the built space different typologies of avifauna shelters are demarcated. Undulated areas on the terraces or the slope could act as terrain for human leisure activities. Finally, some of the design and structural elements could also act as support systems that nurture green growth on them. The architecture produced, intends to maximize the qualities of unmanicured wilderness and ambiguity, the former enables the organic development and activity of species, the later changes experientially the inhabitant's predisposition over the natural and pushes towards ecological awareness, through cohabitation and close co-relation. Next, we focus on the internal architecture of the built space. We develop the model for integrating ecological data and the intelligence into a model, that is then optimized in terms of its mass and geometries for growth. Each part of the built level has different spatial complexities. The cohabitual levels are consisted of different floor levels, permanent partitions and a series of non-human agent networks intersecting the built space. Along with the internal spatial development for non-humans, we also consider how it is like to inhabit these spaces for humans. Post this experimentation, we move forward to values adaptive to sites of different scales, densities, and environmental conditions. We now focus on generating datasets informed by site-specific environmental data. We work on three sites, Athens, Hong Kong, and London to experiment with different scales of expansion and climatic conditions. We use Athens as an example for the site study. First, 
the footprint is generated by using the adjacent buildings or habitat obstructions as anchor points. Second, we conduct solar analysis and highlight the areas of the footprint receiving maximum and least amount of sunlight, which affect the height differentiation of the building mass. Third, we identify existing non-human areas in the surroundings and connect them, with the highest light receiving areas of the building. These networks are going to be translated into non-human densification inside the construction. The previous approach of applying complex ecological information is applied on three new spatial layouts with scales of 50 meters, 100 meters and 200 meters, respectively. The datasets created inform three new GAN models. Next, we follow the above process of applying site-specific data that influences the GAN and makes it environmentally specific to that locale. The footprint is extrapolated from the map and then organized by orientation and usability of the spaces. Each color indicates a different oriented zone on the mass, dedicated to a specific function. For instance, yellow indicates the main structure and can accommodate avifauna and other smaller urban animals for nesting. Now, we compare the scale of all the three sites, Athens, Hong Kong, and London in their respective site context. In this step, we integrate all the data onto the footprint on different levels. The series of plans cut at different levels, highlights the non-human agent network densifications in its interior dedicated to ecological production. Activities such as nesting, growing, and breeding takes place in the non-human agent networks, northeast and southeast oriented slopes in the built space. The final set of design development is done on Athens site. Amidst the bustling modern center of historic Athens, stands a testimony of cohabitable architecture. An ecologically productive architectural setting that stretches the threshold between human activity and ambiguous of the wild. The building generated, can host multiple temporary layouts of internal separation and function through reconfigurable structures. Cryptogon, in essence, generates building incubators of ecological productivity. Its economic model is based on space rental. Companies can rent space inside the building to set up their own pop-up offices and eventually power natural production through their economic production.